right, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the damn house down so we can rebuild it. And we're talking about your business as well as your personal life and everything in between, because at the end of the day, to be a construction champion, you got to be a champion in every aspect of your life. And I am super excited for today's conversation. Tommy, it is great to have you here today. Hey, thank you for having me. It's it's uh it's a pleasure. I, I love your enthusiasm and your excitement. Uh let's just just jump right in head first. This is gonna be great. Awesome, man. Why don't you take uh, a minute, tell all the construction champions a little bit about yourself, what got you here to today, and what excites you about the construction industry? Oh, this is going to be great. This is this is just awesome. Uh, man, how I got started, you know, I, I worked odd jobs as a kid, you know, newspaper route, pouring concrete, laying asphalt on the uh, streets and highways to cleaning warehouses and that's where I am today. It was just something in the construction world. And uh, I got a degree in landscape architecture uh, from college. And, and since then, I had a dream of getting in just in the landscape, construction, design, build world. Uh, the first five years out of, out of college, I did was just a designer. So I learned how to do all the CAD and drawings and, and uh, all the detailed work that goes into the construction aspect and hand rendering, 3D modeling, you name it, everything under the sun from the design side. Um, after five years, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot sit at my desk for uh, 10 hours. That is not, I'm not built for that. Um, so I had to get into the construction side. I had to get into the, the building aspect um, and uh, moved back to the great state of Texas. And uh, there I had a, a several stints of um, experience. One being uh, in the civil construction world. So I did a, a two handfuls in of of that where I, I uh, worked with a couple of hundred million dollar companies, massive construction projects all over North Texas, Oklahoma and Arkansas. And so I was project manager for all that and anything civil related we did. Um, we did dirt, pipe, paving, walls, landscape, you named it, turnkey services. And then most of my experience came from a, uh, a, a company in Dallas where we did uh, landscape work, man, design, build, maintenance and worked there for like nine years and worked my way up for a while and uh, did all kinds of insulation project management from private residences to country clubs to museums to master huge estate properties uh, etc and so how did I get here today now I work for a company called McFarland Stanford which is crazy it sounds like a law firm but it is not it is a uh, it is a uh, uh, it's a business coaching uh, company where we tailor to the landscape industry and we don't select, tell you what plants and, 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 and how to pour concrete, but we tell you, we help you how to build your business. And that's where we came in. We found a niche in our market, several hundred clients all over the country, U.S., and we travel the country and see people's businesses and see how they could uh, benefit from our services and, and uh, other people around them. So excited to be here. Awesome, man. Well, I'm excited to ask you the million dollar question. You, I mean, you cut your chops out there cleaning the warehouses and laying asphalt. So we're yeah. going to dive right in there and I'm going to ask that million dollar question. And that is what makes a construction champion? Man, a construction champion of all the years I've been doing this for 20 years uh, as of last year. So I'm going on 21. Um, there's a whole lot of things. I, 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 a construction champion to me mean, means to me, um, you know, absolutely hard work um, and consistency every single day. There's going to be days where you're going to failure and you're going to suffer and you're going to be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. But the, at the end of the day, consistency of what you're doing in your business or or an entry level is stay with it, learn as much as you can, and do put in the hard work. I mean. Uh, I think in this day and age, we're we're all looking around, going, "What's the easy button? Come tell me, come come show me." Um, at the ripe age of some people are twenty five years old, I'm like, "No, no, no, no! You got to put in the work, and you got to stay consistent for years and years to come." I mean, most of the most world's most millionaires and billionaires didn't really get going until the age of 40, 45, 50, 60 years old, right? 
Uh, put in the time, put in the work, and I guarantee you, you'll be a champion in your business. Mm, I love it because we're yeah. going to talk about one of the most underutilized and overlooked aspects of business, consistency, like yeah. literally showing up and putting in the reps. Yeah. But yet we watch people fare at this every day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's no different than, you know, here we are in the start start of the new year type and, and everyone's like, I'm going to lose weight, right? It's just the thing. I'm going to get to the gym. And I tell people all the time, I, you know, I, they ask me, man, how do you do it? And, and um, I'm very disciplined. I'm very consistent. I'm focused just in my strengths. And uh, to me, uh, if you're working out or if you're working, um, you're gonna not going to see anything in one month, right? Nothing. Nothing's going to happen when you're trying to lose a weight for one month. Nothing. The scales, your appearance, your attitude, nothing's going to work, right? So that's when people start to like tail off and go, this is a bunch of load of junk, right? But you've got to put in the work. Like it's the long game, right? It's the journey, not the destination. It's right. We focus on this, like, I want to look this certain way, or I want to build this certain company, but really it's about the journey of the experiences along the way, right? It's the failures, it's the learning new things, it's trying something, it's like some wins here and there, let's celebrate. But like, it's the long game at the end of the day. This is a long marathon, put in the work of consistency and 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 celebrate those failures along the way. And then each year, each month that goes by, you get a little bit better and a little bit better. Yeah, it's, I mean, everything is a longer game than what we ever anticipate it to be. But yeah. the wins are really in that minute, just details, like having a plan and showing up and checking those boxes every day. That's how you're going to win the war. Like that's the batters that are faced every day. It's just consistently yeah. putting in that effort. How do you help guys get through that barrier of understanding like that's what will lead to the success because it can get daunting? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a tough it's a tough uh, beast out there in the world, right? But we believe in in, in there's three things. There's um, as we mentioned before is the three P's. It's the people, the process, the profits, and based based on that foundation, consistently hitting those three and thinking about those three along the way. Um, it'll be great. And I'll break those down for you. So people at the end of the day, it's your most important asset of your business, uh, of anything. It's not the machine. It's not the office. It's not the cool, awesome projects that you got to build. It's actually the people, the people make all of that run. Right? So how do we take care of those people uh, at the end of the day? Well, First, we gotta have, we gotta we gotta have an attractive business. We gotta have the law of attraction where people want to come work for us, right? So, what does that mean? It means a good culture company. Um, how do you when they come on board? Like, what's your onboarding process look like? Is it just, hey, here's a truck, get after it, buddy? You know, we'll see you. Good luck. We kind of like throw them out in the fire in, in the wolves, right? See what happens. That's just the nature of the construction world. But like, how do we onboard? How do we develop? How do we train these people? Um, what are their KPIs, the things that they're going to be measured on successful days? What's our vision in the company, our mission, core values? Like all of that is all about the people. And then the second part is the process. Like I meet so many business owners traveling the country and it's like the owner has to touch everything. Everything, it goes through that person, right? Because I only know it best. I've been doing it for 30 years, right? I am the one who has the little touch and go. Um, Miss Smith knows me, general contra a, contractor A. I've known him for 20 years, et cetera, et cetera. But like, we got to take our business and systematize it, right? At the end of the day. So if I take myself out, Will that operation keep going along, right? It's And it's about those processes. It's about how are the finances structured, right? Are we looking at those every day, right? Our financials, our AR reports, AP reports, cash flow management, all that. And then how are our operations? Are we doing good today or good last week so we can pivot and make changes? How are our sales? How are our internal, external communication, the sales to production handoff? from sales to production, like all those processes need to be dialed in. 
Um, and the last thing that a lot of people don't like to talk about is profit, right? We're not volunteering our time. Um, it's kind of a scary thing when you start talking about money. Like in the, the day, we got to make money, right? And so does your team know what it takes to make money? In our world, uh, the landscape business, um, we, we focus on the three most things to make your money the quickest is labor, materials, and subcontractors. Those are the three most high gross uh, profit line items in your gross profit that make the biggest amount of difference. If those are being tracked and measured daily, weekly, monthly, man, you're going to be making money at the end of the day. So between the people, process, and profits, I feel like that's sort of the framework for the long game. Mm. Absolutely. And on Construction Champions, we are not afraid of the word profits because <laughs> that's why we all started doing this stuff to begin with. It's one of the things people can lose sight of, especially yeah. when they're on that grind and they're down and they just end up with a, a job that yeah. it's not creating the vision that they originally set out for. So I love that. That's one of them. Uh, yeah. let's dive, let's dive into the process. I love when you said sales talking to operations, <laughs> another really overlooked, cause I come from the operation side of things, spent time in sales as well. Yeah. And you know, that was one of the main herders that I really pushed was operations, production guys and sales guys meeting to other under and all talking the same language from the beginning to the end. We use the same language as a company. Everybody understands we can have these conversations and opening up and bridging that gap is one of the greatest things you can do. If you have a company that has a front of the house and a back of a house. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love that you're talking about doing yeah. that. Yeah. I, I just to touch on that real quick. Um, I'm an operations guy too. So you and I are in the same boat. Um, I love it. I, I feel like the sales, God bless them. Um, they can paint the prettiest picture and make all everything sort of like magical and promise the world. But it comes up to operations to hit the budget, the timelines, execute it. And it's the it's the trickiest part. Um, you know, one of my uh, great friends and, 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 and partner in crime in McFarland Sanford, Chris, love him to death. He is the salesperson guru, but but he would also sell something and it would be like, you know, here, pavers and construction. This is a patio with no detail. I'm like, Chris, you're killing me, dude. I don't know what all this is. He's like, man, you'll figure it out. You're good. I'm like, no. So we came up with a thing called STPH, sales to production handoff. And I feel like it is probably the number one thing that most construction companies miss or in the big construction world, it's called pre-con, right? Pre-construction mm -hmm. meeting it is that it's, it's, it's a physical handoff. It's almost like passing the baton in a track meet, right? I've got to pass it off to construction. So I got to take everything out of my head, out of the client's head on paper. I got to nail down all the materials, the budgets, where things are going, where to park the trucks at every single day, right? Like all that has to be figured out because once, once I'm moving along, I can't stop and make little decisions of like, Hey, Miss Smith, Hey, general contractor, what did you want to hear? No, we got to go. Um, and so I got to take all that information and get it to me. And once I get it, once I get that information from the sales, it's my baby, right? hundred percent mine. So the budget is what the budget is. And whatever Chris missed, I got to figure it out. If he forgot to add something, cool, great. I got to adjust my budget to make sure I get it. I got a timeline. I got expectations. I got everything. And I go run with it. And then I keep Chris in the loop along the way. But I feel like that is the number one thing that's missed in most construction companies. Because why? Sales is like, we got to go. We got to go. We promised to get started now. And what do we do? We just keep, we just go, right? We skip all of that. But that's like... If you look at general construction, general contractors, they have specified divisions in their company called pre-construction. They spend hours and days and weeks preparing the job, right? Buying out contracts and all of setting this matrix of timelines and deadlines along the way. It's the single biggest, most important step in your construction business. Oh, it absolutely is. And it gives you an opportunity to get your sales rep on the same page as you're forming yeah. it and installate or your installers. It, it is way overlooked because it's something that, like you said, you sell and you prompt. There's all this stuff that's involved 
and to not have that conversation because you my experience is the foreman guy. They want to deliver that experience. Yeah. They want to over deliver and do this awesome project, but they don't understand what was even talked about a lot of times because it's literally gets thrown in a bin or say it's all digital. It just gets uploaded. There's no communication. Mm -hmm. The sales rep don't answer the phone because he doesn't even have a relationship with the installer or foreman. Right to be able to answer any of the questions throughout the project. Yep. Like having that pre-meeting, having that handoff, or just building those relationships between your sales and operation guys would change your business because the sales guys don't want to overpromise. Yeah. They only know what they know. And right. the production guys don't want to under-deliver, but they only know what they know. And you put that in the, the environment, you know, shit can really go south really fast. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. You know, and, and um, there's a book that I that I love the most. It's called Flawless Execution. And it's one of the great books of operations. And what they talk about is, you know, flying an F-16 fighter jet, right? Great. Granted, we're not flying the fighter. It's not as life and death situation doing construction. But if you compare it to it, you can see some similarities. As that pilot is flying his jet, he's not radioing back to sales going, hey, man, what's the decision on that target that we're supposed to hit of the enemy? Like, I just want to confirm that. No, no, you're going 700 miles an hour, right? You need to know all your options at 700 miles an hour, right? Um, the, the other thing that we almost forget, right, in the sales production, as the, as the production is going, moving along, and you're starting to wrap things up, right? What we, what we call... Uh, we have a thing called debrief, right? So at the end of the job, it's done. We need to go back to the salesperson and go, here's what we learned. Okay, here's how the project ended financially. Here's how we did on the timeline and deadlines. Here how, here's how the client's expectations were. This is what we met. This is what we didn't meet. And the salespeople need, and the estimators need that feedback. So they went and go into the next project. They have the tools and the, and the, the briefing sessions to learn from those and then push them back to operations. So it's a continuous circle, right? Along the way where you're, you're selling the product, you're, you're, uh, you're doing your handoff, you're executing and you're debriefing back to sales. Well, you gotta, you gotta finish the loop. So then the yeah. sales again. close it up. A lot of times, you know, we can get frustrated with the sales guys, but then we never even have a conversation on what went sideways on the project or what was the problem. So wrapping that up, I mean, that only makes sense to complete that loop. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, at the end of the day, good operations, people will do that. They will like get the feedback back to them because that's only going to make the operations even better if the sales team knows that kind of stuff. That's one of the biggest missteps in the handoff, right? And as a curation of a of an installation is is closing that loop with the debrief of all the feedback that went good. Like I want to know why jobs were really profitable. Like what's the reason? Like we can sit here and critique of all the things that went bad, but like quite honestly, there's a lot of good things going on, right? There, there's always going to be a little bit of a you know, uh, 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 a clash with sales and operations, right? It's just never. It's always going to be understood, but like. If we can provide that feedback back to sales, that makes our our operations team much better. Well, yeah, and it puts you in an environment where you're talking about a lot more than the netty gun. Because yeah. a lot of times that's all each other hears. Like sales only hears the netty gun from operations and operations only hears the netty gun that the sales guys have. Like, but you can create an environment where it's all positive. You take the netty gun out of it because the netty gun's really the ones and twos here and there, mostly everything's positive, but we don't ever highlight that because there's a, right. there can be a real rift between those two departments. Right. Yep. Sure can. Sure can. I, it, you know, listen, um, that'll never end the rift between the two, but like <laughs> I, I, the reason why I was successful as a project manager was I was, I, for one, I owned the project. It was my baby. I would always, um, I always did what we called a weekly weekly recap at the end of the week. And we would send this out to all of our clients that were in the middle of the construction and said, 
All right, client, this is what we did last week, and this is what you can expect next week, right? And I would always copy my salesperson because then they would know at a high level of how the project's going. Because when the client comes back for phase two or 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 another change order work, like the salespeople are, are in there because they've got to go after those projects, right? They got to close deals. So they're always kept in a loop. Um, so we always did a thing called a weekly recap to the client. Every, at the end of every single week of the past, present, future of their project we're working on. So kind of another way to sort of close the loop, keep the sales guys somewhat at a high level of understanding where the project is. And it was uh, it was successful for us. Awesome, man. I love it. I love what you're doing. Uh, for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to connect with you, follow you, learn more about what you're doing, where where's the best places for them to do that? Yeah, so uh, our website is McFarlandStanford.com. So uh, McFarland, M-C-F-A-R-L-I-N, and Stanford, like the StanfordUniversity.com. Um, you can look us up there. We're all over social media, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera. And also, I've got a podcast myself called Roots of Success. So go check us out. We interview uh, clients all over the country, vendors and all that. So give us a give us a holler and uh, and we can talk shop about anything in the world of the landscape industry. Awesome, Tommy. Well, thank you for being on the show today. I uh, uh, very much appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, construction champions. Another episode in the books where we talked about a couple of great co topics. I think are great, but consistency. It's a time to take a look in the mirror and start to think. Am I consistently doing the things I should be doing every day? Am I showing up and checking the boxes that I need to check? Or am I, you know, getting distracted, doing things that you shouldn't be doing that lead to not long-term success? It's the details of being consistent about that that will produce the results that you're looking to have over time. And then... Operations and sales, a subject that is close to my heart because I spent a lot of time dealing with it. You know, everybody always just thinks like that's just a clash and that's just what it is. It's just like Tommy talked about here today. It doesn't have to be that way. If we're proactive in creating an environment where there's not a clash, because a lot of times it's our own culture. It's what we do that creates that we have the division. We create these silos. At the end of the day, you're one company together moving towards a, a happy customer. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have to look at it for yourself, for all your employees, your sales, your operations, your marketing, your service. All these different parts of your business are just one trying to create the same outcome. And the sooner we understand that, and the sooner we bring that company to your other and have them understand that, the less rift you're going to have. The less you're going to hear say, oh, that was his fault, or oh, that was her fault. They didn't set the appropriate expectations. I did what I was supposed to do. I mean, does that stuff sound like stuff you have heard before? I know yeah. it is, because yeah. I've heard it as well. So, mm -hmm. construction champions, go look in the mirror. Ask yourself, Am I creating silos in my own business for no reason at all? And then ask yourself about your consistencies and just show up tomorrow and consistently do the right things that are going to lead you to the success that you're meant to have. Construction champions, make sure you go to our website, check out all of our great sponsors. And until next time, be the champion you're meant to be. Champions, I am super excited to talk to you about our partner, Contractor Staffing Source. Paul and his team have over 40 years, or Paul himself has over 40 years of experience in construction, and he knows what it takes to not only grow and scale a company, but also hire the absolute best for your company. And with this partnership, we have put together an amazing bundle of free resources from his free million dollar hire course to a free disassessment 
to a free cognitive ability assessment. All you have to do is go click the links at Construction Champions Podcast or in the show notes for this to access all these free resources. This is the kind of partnerships that Construction Champions Podcast will be bringing Ones that add value, just like all of our other ones, this one adds massive value to your company and where you're headed in the future so you can continue to grow and become the champion you were meant to be.